T minus 15. 10. 9. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. 0. And liftoff of Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich, continuing a legacy of ocean observation and international collaboration to benefit all humanity. And Wendy propulsion is nominal. Beautiful shot there from the first stage looking down towards Earth and seeing the, the plume there created by those nine Merlin 1D engines. Beautiful clear skies there from Vandenberg on the ground, able to track with that rocket as you see it on screen now. Just a reminder, coming up here very quickly, we're going to hear booster, or first stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Booster separation is there visible on screen now, beautiful shot. There's the backflip, as Jesse mentioned, beginning with the, the Falcon booster. Stage one, boost that burn has started. And that second engine looks like it has lit. You can start to see the engine bell there turning uh, an Both orange. Vehicles are following nominal trajectory. Fairing separation confirmed. And there goes the fairing. That's exposed. That is Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich, there on your screen. That is the satellite that has been exposed now because the fairings have been jettisoned and separated, and you just saw it there tumbling away. Some beautiful shots on the way to orbit. And stage one, boost back burn shut down. So we're getting reverse angle views of that engine on screen. That's what you're seeing. Uh, this is switching between opposite ends, opposite sides of that second Both stage. Vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectory. And that term nominal being used, uh, we've heard that a lot during this call out. Uh, the, that's a very good sign. Nominal just means that everything is going according to plan with, within the expectation of operation for the vehicle. So we are, oh, there, a great shot from the first stage. Uh, you can see the hypersonic grid fins there that are expanded, um, those honeycomb-shaped structures. As the booster begins to enter the atmosphere, those will be able to help guide and stabilize the booster to make sure that we hit that pinpoint landing like we heard that question asked. Uh, how do we ensure pinpoint landing? And those grid fins play a huge part in that. So, Philip, from a trajectory perspective, is this just kind of a, a moment where does do the people working this mission do they kind of just sit and wait as well here? Because obviously we're not controlling this actively; it's just the vehicle, in theory, just doing what it's programmed to do. Right. I mean, I will say I didn't personally work this mission, so I'm not sure what my coworker who worked it for the sure, past couple of years sure. is thinking. But it's beautiful to watch this trajectory that we've been planning out for years. We know what the math looks like. We know what the numbers are. But actually seeing these views from the second stage is just amazing. Yeah, very good. Uh, and we'll talk more about kind of your role and what you do as a, a trajectory analyst. So that uh, second stage uh, Merlin vacuum engine, uh, M MVAC as we like to call it, uh, that produces around 210,000 pounds of thrust once it's on orbit uh, in the vacuum of space. Hey, on, entry burn has started. All right, so call for the entry burn there. I think Daryl and Marina are ready for us. They should be there with Jesse to talk us through the landing. Uh, how was launch? I think, can you tell that we were excited? We were standing oh, there, we saw it, it was so down. clear we could see the separation as it was going the entire time. Jesse, I mean, isn't that- Aw, inspiring. My mind is blown. <laughs> so it's gonna be landing right, right behind, behind us, mm -hmm. and we've got a view now of the actual booster coming back. Um, it's got its grid fins out, and that's helpful. That's yeah. it has to use those things. Yep, it has to help steer it um, as it's making its way back to land. So it's the steering mechanism. It's it's really interesting that it lands right next to the launch pad. 
we have a little tent over top of us, so we're not going to see that first boost back. Hey, you but we it? have a clear shot of uh, it coming down onto the pad. The other thing we're wait, uh, waiting for, and, um, stage two, and we're going to call that out. Here it comes. There it is. Oh my goodness. Coming in at an angle oh my God. and just straightening out. What do you think, Jesse? That's amazing. Oh my goodness. I might cry right now. <laughs> So incredible. Every time I see this, it's just slowing down so perfectly. Look perfect. How. Just hovering. Oh. Like oh. There's the sonic booms we talked about and touchdown. Oh, oh my we heard God. that. Oh, <laughs> that was yes. And Rocket Lander did LZ4 landing operator to 11.100 on recovery two. I'm a little teary oh, right now. I know. The, 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 the power to see it here in person, to feel it. Oh, and like Jesse said, no matter if you see it or not, you always hear it, right? So that yes. sonic boom is recognizable wherever and you are. reverberating through yeah. the valley oh, here. I know. <laughs> All right. We're getting that live, and I wanted to call that out for you. So there goes Sentinel-6. Uh, that is a beautiful sight, uh, watching it drift off there. Again, we are kind of shaded by the Earth, um, so we're not in direct sunlight at this time. Um, so that's why it's as dark as it is. Uh, if the sun were on this side of the Earth, we'd see a little bit more of that. But that's going to kind of just drift off, and that's completely normal and expected. Mm -hmm.